I've been promising this all morning because it's fascinating. The Warriors kick off their final stretch of the regular season tonight against the Lakers. Right now, they're in the final play-in spot. Draymond Green, of course, has had another tumultuous season. On his podcast, he brought on his longtime teammate, Clay Thompson, and they had the following fascinating exchange. Listen closely. I want to ask you this question, and I want to ask it because I'm afraid of the answer. When I get ejected or something of that nature or suspended, what do you feel? How do you feel? What, like, what are your thoughts? Please be brutally honest with me. It's going to crush me, but no. I, I need to hear it. Well, I mean, it's, it happens. I mean, you know what, Dre, you're kind of a, kind of a throwback player. So when you're not out there, it's like a piece of us is gone. Me and Steph are really nice guys, like probably too nice, you know, and we could never be ourselves and have the freedom we do on the court without you. We just need you. And that, that, that like disappointment and that feeling of just like shaking your head that just comes from like, dang, man, we can't do this without you. What a fascinating exchange that is. Credit to Draymond first and foremost for asking the question and, and the conversation there. And so Uncle Seth, I wanted him in on this because the day that he got ejected recently, Seth, you were on with us and you had a lot of strong words and I want to hear them, but, but Legs, you had particularly strong words. So I just wonder your reaction to what we just heard. Well, and that sound bite's a lot longer than I listened to the entire thing. Because he went on for about six, seven minutes yeah. right, talking about this. And I thought Clay Thompson still was being a nice guy. Like he was still kind of holding back, trying to indicate how difficult it is on their team without really going all in on Draymond. But I think at least he let Draymond know, like, what's going through his mind, Steph's mind in the moment. And that's why that night against the Orlando Magic, with everything Draymond went through this year and, and getting an indefinite suspension, which is something we've really never seen in the NBA, and then to come back from that and to get kicked out of a game four minutes into it on a night when your team is fighting for their life just to make the play-in at the time, if you recall, the Houston Rockets had won 11. They were right on Golden State's heels. To eliminate them completely, you get kicked out in four minutes. I called it selfish. I said it was putting your own emotions first before the good of the team. Those are the things that Klay Thompson and Steph Curry really feel. They didn't say that. And look, a lot of the things he said was about how much he's helped them win and how badly they need him. That's all true. Clay didn't really, I think, say what actually is going through his mind and Steph Curry's mind and Steve Kerr's mind in the moment. And Steph Curry's body language that night was the story of that particular ejection, if you recall. He looked completely exasperated, spent, despondent, couldn't believe, really, what he had just witnessed, that they're going to be, have to play 44 minutes now without Draymond Green. Um, and that's really what Klay Thompson, I think, it was thinking. And so I think for me personally, I think he held, held up a little bit on Draymond. Even though Draymond opened the floodgates, hey, come at me, let me hear it, I think Clay held back. Seth, how about you? I think Draymond asked the question. He knew the answer, though. And I, I agree with you, Legs. I thought that, that, that the answer was absolutely kind of a softball. Uh, look, Draymond Green knows they're better with him on the floor. Draymond Green knows his value for, to the team. So if he knows the answer to those two questions, then why does he act the way he acts? Because he's taking away from the good of the group. He's hurting the guys who he supposedly cares the most about. So, like him asking a question, great. Draymond, you asked a question. You know the answer to the question. If you're true to yourself, if you're honest with yourself, Draymond, you know the answer to the question. So, you know what? The only problem is, what is the solution? The solution is, don't act that way. Control yourself. Control your controllables. All right? Act like the way if you're raising your children, like you'd want your kids to act. Act like you would want a good teammate to act. Act like you'd want Steph and everyone else on your team to act. So, like, he knows the answer to the question. The, the deal is, can he do it? He knows he's hurting his team. He knows he's hurting his teammates. But I want to come back to this because I, I think it's, it's a bigger uh, topic and, and we will have more time in our second hour to do it. But very quickly... Are we seeing the end of that? They're not making a championship run this year. Whatever it is they managed to do in the play-in and everything else. 
Do we think we're seeing the last of that trio? They're talking about the three of them being so important together. Uh, Is this going to be it? That core group, as currently constructed, will not contend for another championship. Ever. That's not going to happen. Oh. And, and I also don't, you know, it's easy to say, oh, break it all up this summer, go in a different direction. It's a lot easier said than done. Right. To get back value that's going to keep you relevant around Steph Curry, who is still really at the top of his game, that's, that's a lot easier said than done. And so I don't know that they have a lot of options with Draymond Green and Klay Thompson in the summer, but I don't think this group will contend again for a championship. They'll be interesting. They might be in the playoffs. They're not going to contend, I don't believe, with some of the better teams that are out west right now and how young so they are. So much here that I find so interesting, and it transcends basketball, certainly, which is why I wanted all of the players in on this conversation. And frankly, I think it transcends sports. I think there's an element to this that practically anyone who's ever had any relationship of professional or personal nature can relate to. So, I wanted to hear what everyone thought of that and what everyone thinks in general of the legacy of what is one of the great trios in the history of that or any sport, what they have accomplished, and with that as the backdrop, what it is we just heard there. Legs, it's your sport, so I'll start with you. When it first happened, you had very strong words on Draymond. What's your reaction today? Well, listen, Draymond, he, he opened up the door for Clay to say whatever he wanted to, but also Draymond knows who Clay Thompson is. And Clay Thompson, in that interview, by the way, that went on for a lot longer than that soundbite. Clay Thompson said, you know, Steph and I are really nice guys. <laughs> he prefaced everything with that. And guess what? He again exhibited that because he held back. He, he tried to be honest in terms of the impact on the team. I don't actually think Clay Thompson was being honest in terms of what internally Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Steve Kerr, and that organization feels when moments like that happen. Yeah, I was very strong about this because you're talking about a team that still has Steph Curry playing at that level. And when you can't control your emotions to that extent four minutes into a game that you have to have this late in the season, that there's no other word for it for me other than selfish because that's a guy that can't put the collective ahead of his own venting needs, his own emotions. He can't put the break on it. And by the way, he had a lot of time between the first tech and the second tech. It's not like he got hit up, bang, bang, two in a row, which happens sometimes. He got one, took another 90 seconds to get the second one. Like, at some point, you have to be able to rein that in for the betterment of your team. And that's really what Clay Thompson was thinking. And the body language on Steph Curry that night, to me, said more than anything that I could say. He was despondent, exasperated, spent, emotionally exhausted was his reaction when this happened, knowing that they've got to now go try to win a game for 44 minutes without a guy that is critical to their success. So that's really what Clay Thompson is thinking. And if you put a thought bubble on Steph Curry that night, boy, I'd like to know how strong that thought would have been. So Clay held back to the best that he could while giving Draymond credit and letting him know, hey, man, we need you out there. It goes far beyond that for me in terms of, um, you know, your, your state of mind in the moment if you're Draymond Green. You just cannot allow that to happen because you're accountable to your teammates. I want to hear everybody's reaction. RG3, you, you were nodding along there. What, what did you think of all this? Yeah, I mean, Legs, I think you know this. Like, when you're in the locker room and, and your teammates truly love you and care about you, uh, you can feel that. And I think Clay took that long pause before he answered Draymond's question because they, they care so deeply about Draymond. They want Draymond to be Draymond, but they need him to be a leader and not a distraction. You know, in my playing career in Washington, I, I knew who the enforcer was on our offense, and it was our left tackle, Trent Williams. And when he wasn't out there, I felt that. He was my left tackle. He protected my blind side. When Draymond's not out there on the court, the rest of his team feels that. Like I said, they want him to be Draymond, but they also want him to understand there's a line that you can't cross. And at this point, if he's going to help them finish strong, this big three that they have, help them finish their career strong there in Golden State and have a chance this year, he has to control himself and use that old adage of, Listen, you can't control everything, but you can control your response. And Draymond is a champion. He has to start acting like a champion down the stretch because his teammates need him. Bug? You know, so sometimes, guys, we can look at this team and realize that they can't do it with, without him, 
And right now they can't do it with him. When I say they can't do it without him, think about this. They invented this small ball lineup, the death lineup, when they put Draymond Green at the five. And they would not have won those championships had Draymond been there. He's the emotional leader. He's the guy that sets the tempo because it's a lot of nice guys on their team. Even when they had KD on their team, there was a lot of nice guys on their team. You got to have an emotional leader on, on every team. In football for us, it was Warren Sapp. And we had to learn to deal with the emotional outbursts, whether they were good or bad, because we knew that Warren Sapp set the tone and tempo for our team. And the Warriors have had to do that with Draymond Green. Well, now, guess what? He's costing them. And I guarantee you, Steph is saying, man, I know we can't do it without him. Right now, we can't do it with him. But we really need to get rid of the emotion. And, and, and it's kind of a crux because they need that emotion. Because as Clay said, him and Steph are a bunch of nice guys. you got to have somebody to set the tone and tenor for your team. And I think right now, the Warriors have to deal with the good and the bad. The, the bottom line is this, is that the Warriors aren't as good anymore because the guy that Draymond asked that question is not as good anymore. Klay Thompson is not what he was. And I think their ability to deal and, and, and put up with all the outbursts from Draymond Green used to be mitigated based on how good they were. And that had a lot to do with Klay Thompson. He's not the player he used to be, but maybe that's a side note in this conversation. Go ahead, big fellas. My Marcus, finish it up. Yeah, the day, the day that the day after this happened, I saw Legs. I watched uh, you guys on Get Up, and Legs talked about. I'm not prefacing all of the great things that Draymond has has done, and we get we get like that on television because we respect what guys bring to the game outside of the current topic that we're talking about right now. And I, I I've been in that situation. I understood what leg where Legs was coming from, but we can't talk about Draymond Green in a vacuum. Because the same things, like like the like my old uncles used to say, the same things that'll make you laugh or make you cry. And in this particular situation, that's what Bug was alluding to. Without this Draymond Green, you're not four-time champions. I don't care how much we talk about exactly. uh, Steph Curry and, and Clay Thompson and their greatness. Without Draymond, you are not four-time champions. Without him doing these type of things but not being ejected, in, in particular situations, you don't win four championships. This goal, this, this iteration of Golden State is not who they are, and we don't think about them if Draymond Green is not on this basketball team. Now, did we know that it, it, he would be as important? Probably not in the beginning stages of what we saw this team do. The other part of that is now we're late in their careers we're, we're, where they need to squeeze every ounce. The West has gotten tremendously better, so your margin of error has went down. And you're not as good as you used to be. On the court, this persona, the things that Draymond Green is doing is the reason why he's probably going to be in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. It ain't going to be because of points. It ain't going to be because of rebounds. It ain't going to be because of assists. It's going to be because of the impact that he's had on winning four championships for the Golden State Warriors. So I don't want to always have a conversation about Draymond Green and all of the terrible things, because we should. That's a part of his career. But we also can't talk about it in a vacuum like this attitude and his approach to basketball does not have a complete yep. stamp on why the Golden State Warriors became the team that we see them to be in the past and done all the tremendous things. Obviously, you don't want the ejections and all of the things that have transpired. But those in, in the lines of those ejections and the craziness of Draymond Green, four championships have been won in Golden State when they couldn't win a damn thing before they got there. Super quick legs. Go ahead. Yeah, my, my thing is this. N nothing anybody said do I disagree with. Obviously, I know the impact that he's had in winning. My point all along is, you know, you can be both. You can be a good dude off the court. You can be a super yeah. intense good dude on the court. You can be a versatile guy committed to winning and also be able to rein in your emotions in the moment. And, yep. and for me, that night, what, why I got angry actually watching that game when that happened and I saw Steph Curry's reaction, Steph Curry, more than anybody else, is responsible for that team's success. And if you're Draymond Green, you owe that dude in that moment to be out there when you know he is fighting for his life as competitive yeah. as Steph is to be a part of the postseason. And at that point, it was hanging by a thread because Houston was hot on their heels. Now, I think they put it to bed and they're going to make the play in. But at that time, you didn't know. It was very uncertain. And now you just left them out there by themselves for 44 minutes to play without him. So I'm just saying you can't have all of it 
And in the moment, I just felt like Draymond Green let those guys down that night. Nobody's denying his impact on winning and the importance of the no organization. Doubt. I think we all get that. I mean, people are like 360-degree, 3D, uh, you know, creatures, yeah. and, and you have to take it all in its totality. All right.